we had gone to get our fireplace to get ready for the next steps in our inside projects. This was no little task for two people. But two people in a tractor? Now we're talking. Y'all recognize this little slab right here? Yeah, that is that dry pour with a tractor on it and an over 400 pound fireplace in the bucket. And if you're wondering, there was no cracking or crumbling. So now that we got the stressful chore of getting this inside, we actually just got a call about a local guy around here that has fresh shrimp for sale and they're a really, really good price. So we're gonna go ahead and head down there and get those. These shrimp probably haven't been out of the ocean for only, what, two to three, maybe at max four hours. We're gonna go ahead and head down there and pick those up so we can go ahead and get some of our freezer stock back up with shrimp. Okay, how many pounds do you wanna get? 100 pounds. So in case y'all have never seen a fresh shrimp or how this process works, we're gonna kinda of show y'all exactly how it is. It's not gruesome at all, we promise you, but I actually have never seen like a fresh shrimp before, before moving down here. Being landlocked up in Illinois, that's just not a common thing for you to find. <laughs> We got all our shrimp cleaned up and ready to go. We ended up getting 25 bags of clean shrimp out of this and around 13 bags that we salvaged for bait shrimp, which is what we love to keep on hand. When we started processing these shrimp, we had power, but little did we know that was not gonna last long and we wasn't gonna see any electricity for quite some time. We got all our shrimp put up and about the time we were getting that wrapped up, the power went out. When the power went out, we immediately started getting alerts on our phones saying that there was a mandatory evacuation for the community that's just a little bit north of where we live. Now, when I say a little bit north, I mean like two and a half miles. It's really close. The winds has changed direction and the fire is coming in this direction. So at this point in time, we're not 100% sure what we're gonna do. Right. You have everything prepped up and ready to go to take the precautions to make sure that we can do the best that we can to prevent our house from burning. So there's really nothing that we can do besides sit and wait for right now. Um, we could evacuate. That That is something that I know y'all are gonna say, why didn't y'all evacuate, why didn't y'all evacuate? We may have to, that's right. the reality of it. But we're not gonna do that until it's just crunch time and we need to go. We have the tractor hooked up, we have the disc going, we have everything that we need to do to try to do the best we can. We have to do something because if it comes through here and we do nothing, I don't think we'd ever forgive ourselves. Absolutely not. And and I know at the end of the day, it's just a house, but if this is our place, you know, if there's a way that we can help to prevent this, we're definitely gonna do it. 
Now, of course, we're not gonna put each other at risk or put Ladley at risk, but we need to do whatever we need to do first. And another thing that we need to keep an eye on too is this power situation. Because we lost power whenever we were mid shrimp deheading. <laughs> It's just the whole deal. Listen, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen to us. And I know I just saw on the maps too. I don't know what the situation is with this either, but did you see that hurricane coming in? I don't even want to think about a hurricane right now. Yeah, Lord so they're mercy. predicting a hurricane in the Gulf right now for like, I think it's Friday that's supposed to come in. So, and it's supposed to be apparently really bad, but you never know until they get a lot closer. But one thing first, first thing is that we need to worry about this wildfire situation, so. Not that this is important at this point, but we have our shrimp put in the freezer. We do have our generator hooked up to the freezer, so at least we're not losing our food. I don't think anybody cares about the shrimp at this point. <laughs> but I, but I kind of do, you know. If the fire don't get here, we're gonna have to eat. Anyway, Lord have mercy. We're both exhausted. We have, we've been trying to keep all this stuff going and our poor community. I right. mean, all these poor people around here, some of them's already lost homes. This is the real deal, y'all. This is, this is bad for a lot, a lot of folks down here, and it's extremely dry, and we're not used to that here in South Louisiana. It's dry as I've ever seen it, and I've lived here my entire life. Since I moved here, they've had snow for the first time in years. They've had a drought. They've had two back-to-back -back hurricanes. Freeze. A freeze, a freak freeze. And now this, I asked his daddy the other day, I said, you want me to move back home? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm getting to the point where I'm expecting to see big swarms of locusts and stuff. I just don't need that. So right now, Jim has got this generator hooked up to the house. He's kind of got it rigged up in a way that you typically wouldn't do. So thank goodness that he can figure out how to do those kinds of things for us. But we're going to go out there and check on that and we'll keep you all updated as we know things. That day, the fire grew due to high winds. At the front of the wildfires, it spread over six miles wide. Within a few hours, thousands of acres have been burned and a whole towns have been evacuated. This all occurred within 15 miles of us. As we watched the wind direction, we knew it could come our way at any time. And just like that, our security blanket was gone. Another fire broke out within two and a half miles of us. It was about this time to where we realized that the small, tiny generator that we had was not gonna be able to keep up or the power banks. We knew it was time to make a move for something bigger if we was going to keep all of our house in order, all of our food contained, and just being able to keep cool in our home. At this point in time, you can take life in two directions. You can either just put your tool belt on and go to work, or you can feel sorry for yourself. But we choose the earlier version of that. So we just pick up and we adapt, and we make it happen. This is no step for a stepper. We're just going to keep on pushing. We've been running the house on a fireman generator and it's been perfect for these short outages because we don't need a lot of AC or we didn't need 
you know, we weren't out of power for a really long time like we are this time. We've been looking for a while now to find another, I don't know what you'd say, uh, alternative means of power in the house. And we just haven't got to our off-grid setup yet, meaning like solar power, whatever it is we decide to go to. So this option came available for sale. This is a generator that runs off the PTO on your tractor. So y'all know as well as I do, if you have a generator that sets up for any amount of time, you know, you gotta clean the carburetor, you gotta do something to get it going. Well, our tractor's always running, so the way we think about it is we can just back the tractor up to it, hook up to it, plug it in, and we can run the house. Okay, now let's break that down just a little bit, okay? So what exactly is the PTO? The power takeoff. So whenever we detached, it turns the shaft. Okay. So this shaft is gonna have to connect to the tractor and to the input shaft of this generator. That is a butte, if I might add, some very, 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 very nice people in, over in Beaumont, Texas area, had this thing for sale on the internet. And I went over there, had the pleasure of meeting them this morning, outstanding folks, helped me load this thing up. And we're super excited to get it going because it's getting hot in the house. So it's currently 82 degrees in the house, and that is with two air conditioners running. That's as much as a generator could pull, so. And it really couldn't pull that. We're just asking a lot of it. Yeah, really. <laughs> so the first rattle out of the box, we don't have the plug-in that we need to get the electricity from the generator to the house. And the drive shaft is missing one of the couplings. At least it's only 106 today. <laughs> Lads piled up at our momos drinking chocolate milk and air conditioning. They hook up to their generator. So Jim's mom and daddy have a big old Lincoln, right? It's a big old Lincoln? Yeah. A big old Lincoln that they can plug into their house and ready to go. So we have everything here, as long as we can get this inside of the generator, right? Yeah, I got them uh, hydraulic compression rings, so we might have to do that. Let's just see what we can come up with. <laughs> this is kind of like changing your spark plugs through your exhaust pipe i was thinking more like you know the game what's that game operation operation <laughs> max do you feel like you're playing a game of operation <laughs> hey you got it don't drive it so like many things that we do around here we had to make some minor adjustments to make this work it sure was nice to have an extra set of hands here to help as well. A big thanks to Wags, aka The Dirt Doctor, my brother-in-law for helping us get this thing rolling. We always want to give credit where credit is due and Wags saw us standing in that 100 degree weather and instead of turning away, he jumped right in to help. I just gonna have to do a little persuasion. After all the wiring was said and done, we ended up taking the drive shaft off of a bush hog, putting some concrete pins in the ground with some ratchet straps for some security, and away we went.
With a little Cajun ingenuity, we got our home back up and running. We ended up going days with the power going in and out. We were under a mandatory evacuation mandate, but we were very fortunate that the closest the wildfires got was two miles. Wildfires can change direction at any time due to high winds and mixing that with the drought that we've been having, our homestead could have easily ended up just like this. This is footage that we took from our community. We are happy to inform you all that no lives were lost, but the destruction will take years to come back from. The wrath of Mother Nature's fury is nothing new to our communities, but through storms, floods, and in this case, wildfires, we hold tight to each other and support each other with whatever the need may be. Although we may be small in numbers, volunteers, firefighters, and all other personnel work tirelessly around the clock to keep these fires at bay. 20 to 30 structures were lost along with around 60 to 70,000 acres according to our local sheriff's department. Y'all have truly shocked us by how much love and support you have shown us. We knew we had built a strong community through our page, but we had no idea that we'd have so many people from all over the world offering to help us and checking in on us. It truly brings tears to our eyes to know y'all have our backs in times of need. To each and every one of you that has said a prayer, opened your doors to us, even offering to fly us out of here, we want to do more than say thank you. We wish that there is a way to be able to show each and every one of y'all how much we truly love and appreciate y'all. There are still fires going on around us, but until the last flame is extinguished, our communities will continue to push through.